Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Ambrose Blowfield here from the Sales Mastery Company, back again to cover yet another management topic of importance, which is how to build and develop an awesome sales team culture. Now, culture is something that is absolutely dear to my heart, not simply because I travel the world and experience different cultures, but because I love success. I think we should, shouldn't be ashamed to enjoy success. I love the fact that certain teams in the world, whether that's business teams or sports teams or sales teams, have managed to create a culture that sustains behavior and sustains success long term. And to me, it's the longevity of that. I remember my early days of my career working at Procter & Gamble. There was just a, a feeling whenever you were recruited and interviewed by them or whenever you worked with them or walked through the doors of the head office, there was just sort of a feeling, almost an edge to it, a purposeful nature of every member of your team. Now, hopefully, you've already downloaded the workbook that looks like this. If you haven't, excuse me, you have two choices. Number one is to comment in the area that you're streaming it from. It does go out into various platforms. So if you've got a platform where you can actually stream it, then please do that. And likewise, if not, please send an email to admin at salesmasterycompany.com and say, I'd please like the PDF on how to create an awesome sales culture, please. And then we'll send it through to you. Now, this is the document. Obviously, the second page of the document is just giving me some background information. Today's topic does come from the scale your team and scale your inbound process as part of our Sales Mastery Academy. The Sales Mastery Academy isn't simply what we do, but it's one of the main things that we do these days. And as Peter Drucker, arguably one of the greatest authors and teachers in the world of business in the last 50 years, says, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now, too often I see people quoting this, but not understanding the meaning behind it. As we've got the point at the bottom of that page in your workbook, culture should influence behavior. There should be a clarity around whether some behavior is acceptable in our team and some words are acceptable in our team, some communications acceptable in the team, even some new recruits are acceptable within our team. Culture, i.e. the values and the principles and the behaviors by which we accept, should be really hard and fast. It should be black and white, right or wrong. And therefore, it creates a culture of behavior where there is only one way of acting. Now, at this stage, we're not saying, well, look, suppress the personality of your team members. At this point, we're not saying we don't allow individualism. The fact remains is there is a culture which governs the behaviors and attitudes of every, I want to stress that, every member from the most senior person down to the most junior inexperienced person Culture is what drives a business forward, a team forward, and it drives success because it clearly cultivates the right and the wrong behavior. And we need to be prepared for both. Now, something I'm not going to cover off today deliberately is to talk about the importance of putting in clarity of values, making sure that your sales team's values are aligned to the overall governance values and behavioral values of the overall business and why you want to have alignment between those. And likewise, you know, when we run people through vision days and likewise working with sales teams around the world, often we take them through a process of governing and creating those values. But I'm not going to cover that today. Most people thought think about culture as only values. I want to cover the critical areas or the most common mistake areas when it comes to creating an awesome culture for your team. And in particular, in the world of sales, which is where we spend most of our time. Now, the next quote that is very, very, very valuable, but no one has a name to it at this stage, is the fact that people quit managers, not companies. Right now, even if you work in sales, I want you to make sure that your sales manager or business owner watches this video because they've got to understand that there is a massive responsibility in leadership and they are the reasons why you might quit. If you are the sales manager or business owner, remember People are going to quit you as a manager or the culture that you're operating by, not necessarily the company itself, and very, very rarely for simply more pay. In fact, I remember working in Sydney in recruitment for three years and finding out that the vast majority of people who quit through payment terms within about three months have quit and gone somewhere else or begged for their jobs back. The fact is, people quit the manager or leader who is, of course, the one purveying the culture of the team. So you, the manager, is responsible for the culture. It's absolutely your privilege and your responsibility. The first thing to be clear about is there's that old saying that some people know, which is that the fish rots from the head. The culture of any team or any organization will or will not rot from the head, i.e., 
are the directors of your company living to this culture and values? Is your sales team leader or manager absolutely adhering to the culture and the behavior and the values that we have agreed that we will operate by? Because if you're not aligned to that as a manager or owner, then why would anybody copy you? The fact remains is as humans, it's not what we say someone should do that matters. It's what we do and show them. Most of the best great leaders in history, particularly in the sporting field, and in the sales field are ones that role model the right behaviors on a regular basis. In fact, they're relentless um, when it comes to role modeling the right behavior. So please keep that in mind. The other aspect around that is having your teams back. There needs to be a really tight bond, not creating a negative us versus them. But for a sales team, most teams in other divisions do have a problem with sales. And they need to know that the sales manager or business owner has got their back because the marketing team don't always get on with sales. The finance team rarely get on with sales. The operations team get worried about sales not doing their job in one, one way, shape or form. And we don't need to go into that. But the fact remains is there's a lot of tension anti-sales and you want someone who's got the back of the sales team members to have an awesome sales team culture. Number two, transparency. Now, having had someone's back does not mean you lie on their behalf or you cover them up if they're underperforming. The fact remains is to have an awesome culture that's going to celebrate success. So talk about that being the third major point. But it's something that's it's transparent. It's clear cut that we're winning or we're losing. As individuals, we're contributing or we're not. There needs to be some element of transparency. Now, you've got to have that to have a high performing team. At the same time, you cannot have a manager that dictates to people, micromanages people, and uses the CRM to investigate every tiny little step of what someone's doing every minute of the day because sales teams do not like that. Sales teams will get demoralized, and this is the sadness you'll get. If you tend to start to micromanage many members of your sales teams, very invariably, the first person to quit is your highest performing or your second highest performing salesperson. It's not your average or lower performers because they haven't got the guts to quit. It's your better performers that will resent it. I remember back in New Plymouth in New Zealand many, many, many years ago working with a client and being very successful as they were. One of the managers said, oh, look, I've been on a time management course and I'm going to start measuring every six minutes of my sales team members. My warning to him back then, which sadly came to pass, was your best salesperson is probably going to quit because they're delivering massive value in terms of results, but they aren't necessarily being that organized with time. So you're now choosing to measure them on something that influences results but not necessarily something that is aligned to results because they've shown with their consistent behavior for a number of years that they can perform well despite not following the rules. Now, following the rules is part of culture. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying the value around time management. That's something we talk about a lot in our sales academy and certainly our sales mastery program. But the fact remains here is you've got to get the most out of every team member in your sales team. And sometimes micromanaging them and becoming overly transparent to the point of watching over someone's shoulder every minute of the day, and it'll have a detrimental effect on motivation. As we say in the third point there, you've got to celebrate any and all contributions. What this means is we don't just celebrate the person making the close at the end of the month. We celebrate the sales support or admin team or even the marketing team who contributed to that sale. We've got to be transparent around success, but we've got to be transparent around how everybody contributed so that it becomes a team success. Often the world of sales is measured at an individual level. And that might well be good for individual accountability, but it's not good for creating an awesome culture. What I want you to build in your sales team is a culture that sustains success long after you're gone as a leader, such that it's just the way we do things around here, so to speak. So please be proactive in complimenting team members and be encouraging of having one team member acknowledge the value of other people. It might simply be, I took what you said last month to your client, applied it this month to my client, and this is the result I got. Lots of teamwork, um, and it's got to be genuine, of course. Number four, no team in sales or in any aspect of sport or business in general can sustain an awesome culture unless it in itself, the team and the culture is developing and learning and growing. Now, whether or not it's you accessing people from the outside as external experts to help with that, or you're leveraging the knowledge of individual team members to have them share lessons and learning, 
or you're leveraging the knowledge of others within the sector or industry or in other departments, for example, the fact remains is the moment your team stagnates, the moment it stops learning, it stops growing, it stops expanding their comfort zones, your team and culture will die. It's just a matter of when. It might happen this week, it might happen this month, it might happen a year from now. I guarantee you, unless you've got a culture of learning, you will not have a truly awesome sales culture. You may get away with it for a few weeks or months, but slowly and steadily, the wrong sort of behavior creeps in. Slowly and steadily, we no longer remain match fit versus our opposition. Slowly and steadily, we start to become resentful or possibly even complacent around the dealings with our customers. We start thinking that we're great, that we're better than everybody else. Unless you have a learning culture, you will not sustain a long-term culture that's going to be really, really encouraging for growth. And then finally, I've already mentioned these words before, you need to be relentless. This comes down to basic things, which is anything you observe that fights against the values, fights against the values of of the behaviors or fights against the culture of the team, it's got to be squashed and called out quickly. That includes your own behavior, your own attitude, or even eye rolling on occasion, or the tapping of a desk if you're impatient by nature anything that is deemed to be negative. Remember, it's like an egg. I think of a raw egg. It's far easier to break the egg than to protect the egg. The culture of your team is as important to nurture as nurturing an egg. Anything negative is like scratching the side of an egg. It won't take very long to break. And then to recover that like a dropped egg, to recover it can be almost impossible. And you certainly need a lot of help from outside to recover a culture of a sales team that is not performing at a high level. And often I get called in too little too late. So the reason why we want to share today's topic is we want you to become proactive in control. We want you to lead a great sales team culture so that you do not break just like you don't break an egg. Now, things to worth keeping in mind from today is to understand, as people Drucker did, as the All Blacks do, as the Australian Diamonds for Netball do, as the Australian Institute of Sports understand, as the American track and field teams understand, as the British cycling team understands, although I appreciate they've had some issues in the last sort of five years or so. The fact is, to sustain high performance, you've got to have a culture. You've got to invest in a culture. You've got to understand culture. You've got to allow others to develop in a culture. You've got to develop a learning culture. But you've got to understand To perform in a pressured environment like Olympians, like sports teams, and like sales teams where there's pressure all the time, it is your culture that will oversurpass the impact versus strategy. Yes, you need a sales strategy. Yes, you need sales processes. Yes, you need sales skills. Yes, you need general accountability. Of course, you need those things. But it is your culture that will sustain every member of your team, whether you're watching or not. Most of our clients who are not based in North America have over a month a year away from work. It's your culture that sustains you as a business owner or sales manager. So therefore, the team knows how to operate without you needing to be there. So you can take a break and be a better family person, or you can take a break and be a better friend. The fact remains, culture does eat strategy for breakfast. And that's why we really want to strongly recommend that you share this video with as many teams you know who need help in developing their culture. Yes, there needs to be a values piece done, but today's topics was giving you some practical things that every team could implement straight away to build an absolutely awesome culture. The other thing we want to share with you is the opportunity to join us in our sales academy or one of our programs, whether it's for sales managers, general managers, or indeed salespeople, which is on the document, you'll see that there's a link to book into a scale up call. If you haven't managed to download a document or you can't get access to it, then again, simply send us an email, admin at salesmastery.com, and we'll give you a free 15 minute scale up call. We'll give you some instant advice of where your business is now and how best to get to your destination. If you progress from that, then you might have some time one-on-one with us. Again, free of charge, just to see if we can add value to you. If we can, we'll make suggestions of what the next step should be, whether that's the academy or something else. Likewise, if we can't, you have my word. We'll point you in a different direction, encourage you to go grow somewhere else or down another theme. We're here to support businesses right around the world, especially small to medium businesses. And we know creating an awesome sales culture is a massive part of that. Something we know works well, something we love to get involved with, and something we want to encourage you to get excited about as well. I've been Ambrose Blowfield. We are the Sales Mastery Company. And as always, be sure to take action. Hello there, Ambrose here again to say thank you for watching this video. As always, I want to implore you 
to take action and to share the lessons you've learned. Meanwhile, something you could do to help us in our mission to help countless and thousands and thousands of small to medium family businesses the world over to be more prosperous, be more confident and have a greater impact in the causes they support. And that is, of course, comment, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and to all of our other videos. And as always, be generous and share this with others. Take action today.